Okay, to make this Merlot from Concentrate, we are going to need one quart, 32 fluid ounces of red grape Merlot Concentrate. For our wine yeast, we're going to be using a Red Star Premier Classique. To act as our acid blend substitute, we will be using the juice of a quarter of a lemon. To act as our tannin substitute, we will be using one black tea bag. Now we will be using a homemade yeast nutrient to help our yeast out a bit, so therefore we will need a quarter of a teaspoon of regular active dry yeast. We're going to need about three quarts of water. Actually it comes in at about 11 cups, but that's what we're going to need. Having an eight quart pot is going to help. We are going to need a one gallon carboy jug, demijohn, take your pick. Having an airlock with bung is going to be helpful. Having a hydrometer with testing tube is going to be kind of nice. Let's us know what our starting gravity is. We'll let us know what our ending gravity is and we'll let us know how much alcohol we have produced. Alcohol by volume. And of course, using your food grade sanitizer of choice, we want to make sure that everything has been properly cleaned and sanitized. And that's what we're going to be using to make this wine. The first thing we want to do is that we want to pour off just a little bit of our water into a small saucepan. I don't know, about half a cup would do it. Drop in our tea bag and drop in our quarter of a teaspoon of bread yeast which will help act as a yeast nutrient. Let's turn the heat on to low and we're going to let that come to a simmer. I'll put a lid on it shortly. Now as for our real concentrate, we're going to go ahead and put that in our pot. And the recommended dilution is one quart, basically one bottle, of juice concentrate to 2.8 quarts of water. So we're going to go ahead and pour in the remainder of our water, or nearly the remainder, saving a little bit to wash out the uh, rest of the Merlot juice. Don't want that to go to waste. that to the pot. Turn the stove on. <laughs> the right burner. And let's bring that up to just barely a simmer. We really want to get the temperature up to about 165 degrees and then we can take it off the heat. But if you don't have a thermometer, when you begin seeing bubbles form on the bottom of the pot, then you pretty much know you're there. So we'll just go ahead and let that come up to temperature. All right, our temperature has come up to 165. It's great when you have a digital thermometer that can actually let you know when it's time to get back in the kitchen and do something. If you don't, again, don't sweat it. Uh, there is no bubbling to the surface of, of, of well, it's not boiling, put it to you that way. Uh, you've basically just got wisps of steam coming up and that's pretty much all the temperature you need. Now the reason why we do this heated up is that one, we don't know where this juice <coughs> has come from. And two, we want to make sure that we want to make sure that we kill all wild yeast that might have come along with the, uh, with the grape juice. And if we can kill off a, few, a couple of bacteria along the way, that's all the more the better. Now insofar as our tannin substitute slash yeast nutrient substitute. We can go ahead and add that to the pot. And all we need to do now is put a lid on our grape juice and let that come down to room temperature. Now that our juice has come down to our room temperature, Let's go ahead and add in our lemon slash acid blend substitute. 
using a small strainer to make sure we strain out any seeds to make sure those don't get in there. And again, I'm only going to use a quarter of a lemon. No need to be precise. This ain't that kind of channel. That's good enough. Let's go ahead and incorporate it a little bit. And let's get ready to take a hydrometer reading. All right, looks like our hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.092. Now, I've already taken the liberty of transferring our juice from the pot to our carboy. We've got our cap back going, nice and tight. And since I have the luxury of having a little bit of headspace for the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and take an opportunity to try and incorporate a little bit more oxygen into our juice. All right, but that way we can see it. Go ahead and take our cap off. And now to begin the process of turning our juice into wine, we must add the yeast. And I am adding a quarter of a teaspoon of our Red Star Premier Classic wine yeast. Again, use what you got. If you want to bloom your yeast, go feel free. If you just want to dump it right on in, more or less like that, please feel free. Let's put a cap back on. And let's go grab an airlock. Now in our airlock, basically it's just a mixture of, uh, that was pre-diluted star sand, sanitizer and water. You could just use plain water if that's what you got. Let's go ahead and get that in there. So that as the yeast, yeast is consuming all of that sugar in our must, then it's going to produce a lot of CO2, which is, needs a way to get out of the bottle, and out it goes, and stops bugs from climbing back through there. Now then, on to the next step. What we want to do now is label our creation. And basically what we are making, hopefully, again, is a Merlot. Started it on this date. And our original gravity reading was 1.092. Now, this is just the beginning of, of a long process. Several more steps. Uh, a couple of things that are going to happen is that sometime within the next week, I'm going to probably go out and purchase an uh, 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 inexpensive bottle of Merlot. Merlot and I'm going to reduce this headspace from where it is now up to closer to the top. By then, most of the heavy fermentation would have occurred, so I don't have to worry too much about it foaming and flowing out should that uh, problem come up. Uh, I mean, if you can use water if you like, it's going to dilute it a little bit and it will change your, your uh, gravity reading. Uh, but beyond that, that's about it. Uh, in about, oh, I don't know, six or seven weeks or so, I will probably rack this into a secondary carboy and uh, continue that process every, oh, I don't know, seven or eight weeks or so until this becomes clear, or as clear as it's going to be. At which point, uh, at which point I'll go through the process of uh, uh, degassing it if need be, uh, back sweetening it if need be. Uh, it's definitely, since we don't use sulfites on this channel, this will be pasteurized uh, to basically stabilize the wine. And then after that, bottle it, label it, and when it is, time is right, enjoy it. Again, you can find all of these steps in that my wine making operation playlist on my channel's page. And uh, until then. Okay, it's been 12 months since we started making our Merlot from Concentrate. Uh, it's now time to do the one year tasting. Now, granted, Merlot should generally take three to five years to be ready, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and give this one a shot. Now, uh, in the intervening 12 months, uh, the wine has been racked. It's been degassed, it's been back sweetened, uh, it's been bottled, pasteurized, corked, labeled, and um, the only thing that has not been done, and I'm still thinking about it, whether I want to do it or not, is whether or not I want to cap it or not. Depends. It's got to be good enough to get a cap. Okay, that having been said, uh, we're going to get right into this one. A um, couple of things. Born 6-30-2022. 
Um, ABB came in at 13.13%. Uh, it was back Sweden to a level of 1.012, which is something new that I'm adding to most of my videos, giving you the level of back Sweden-ness or how much sugar I put into it uh, on the back end. And even though I've said it once before, it bears repeating, it's been pasteurized. Um, let's just crack this one open. This is one of five bottles that the uh, batch made. And during the uh, intervening time when I was racking it, uh, in order to keep the, uh, the levels up in the carboy uh, to a respectable level, uh, I did use uh, uh, some store-bought um, Merlots um, to bring the level up. Uh, not, 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 not top shelf, <laughs> not the bottom shelf, but somewhere in between grabbing one of those bottles to do the, uh, to do the uh, bring the level up. So let's get this one open. Can I do this one? Yes. All right. Wow, you can actually smell it's like Merlot grapes. This one might be okay. Now, of course, uh, anybody who's watched this channel on any kind of regular basis knows that, no, I'm not a wine connoisseur. We try to keep things on a, on a simplistic level. Uh, all I really want to know is, is it drinkable or is it something that would have poured down the drain? Um, and at the one year level, uh, one year, one year mark, um, we're going to find out if this is uh, worth the endeavor. Let's see what we got. You know, this is good. <laughs> At the one year mark, it's good. Um, I like I like the, the, the level of back sweetness that I did. New word if I need be, but I like the way I back sweetened it. During the inhale on the nose, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you it smells like this fruit or this chocolate or this, that, and the other because uh, this ain't that kind of channel. Uh, but at 13% alcohol, I mean, yeah, it's there. So the wine's going to have a little bit of a kick to it. Um, uh, the tannin level, for which uh, in this particular case, as I do with most of my wines, to keep it as simplistic as possible, uh, the uh, black tea didn't give it a, uh, a good amount of tannin. Uh, as opposed to using oak chips, oak spirals, oak barrels, <laughs> oak <laughs> trees. Um, uh, that worked out okay. Uh, in terms of acidity, the uh, that's on the lock. There is a slight level of harshness. It's kind of on the small side. Um, uh, I think additional aging uh, would definitely improve this wine quite a bit. But so far, at the one year mark, for something that was made from concentrate, this turned out, this is, I won't say it turned out well. Well, this bottle turned out well, but as far as the remaining four bottles are concerned, uh, I think those are going to be pretty good. Uh, uh, the level of harshness, if you watched the um, uh, Zinfandel uh, tasting that I did uh, a short while back, or the Chardonnay uh, tasting that I did a short while back, all made from concentrate. It was like my trial period of trying to do a varietal grape uh, wine. Uh, this is not as harsh as the Zinfandel, you know, which definitely is going to take several years before that's ready. Um, at the one-year mark, Yeah, the one year mark, this is actually pretty good. Uh, most definitely, I'm going to be finishing this bottle. Uh, what am I having for dinner? Unfortunately, I took out that red snapper that's sitting on my counter. But hey, who says it has to be a white wine? I do have the Chardonnay. I could crack open, but 
Uh, again, this is uh, the year two tasting, so I have to put this back with the other four bottles. Um, yeah, this ended up with an ABB of 13.13% as well. Interesting. However, get that out the way. Um, as far as this Merlot is concerned, uh, it, it's got some body to it. It's not a thin tasting wine. Um, or a thin tasting wine. It's, it's got some body and it's got some flavor. Um, kind of surprised it has to turn out okay so far. Yeah, I think of the three that I've tried, the, uh, I thought the Zinfandel would be, I'm, I, I, when I'm drinking wine, store-bought wine for myself, uh, I will usually reach for a Zinfandel first. Uh, feeling that, maybe a Chardonnay, maybe feeling that I'll go for a Merlot. I mean, that's what I drink. Uh, everything else is, well, I'll, I'll pick up a, well, I digress. Uh, but yeah, uh, considering how this is turning out so far, um, yeah, this is not bad. It's not bad at all. However, keep this one as short as possible. I need to, so I can cork it, just temporarily cap it. Um, keep one as short as possible. Um, if you want to try making a varietal grape uh, from a concentrate, because you can't get your hands on the actual grapes, you know, um, go ahead and give it a shot. Takes a little while. But I'll go ahead and give it a shot. It might turn out for you just as well as just turning out for me. And of course, if you guys are using sulfites instead of pasteurizing uh, to stabilize your wines and this and the other, I mean, I, I, I'm not mad at you. I'm just simply saying that for this channel, you can get by without it, <laughs> which is what I do on almost all my wines. But for sure, am I going anywhere tonight? Not for the next several hours. <laughs> Getting strong hints of cherry. That's what it reminds me of. Cherry. And chocolate. Like a chocolate covered raisin. <laughs> or a chocolate covered cherry. I like this. However, again, to keep it short and simple until the next video comes out, uh, which I might my week for another week or two. Uh, if you like what you see here, please click on that subscribe button. Click on that notify button to be notified when I do kick out new videos. Become a member and become a Patreon. Help this channel out. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.